Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Great Cosmic Shift. I'm your host, Cyrus Kirkpatrick. Uh, so uh, especially a welcome and a thank you to so many people who have arrived to this channel now from Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. This is my new channel. My old channel is inaccessible because I was hacked. So you'll only find me on here for now until someday I gain access to my old account. On this video, we will be talking about, well, the shift, how I fell into that um, the, the, this whole subject matter, how I became very, very involved in it last year. And my experiences leading up to it, clear audience, telepathy, communications to higher densities, how it connects to bigger subjects like the afterlife. A lot of this fundamental information on tonight's show that I think you guys will really like because it's, it's supposed to be a uh, discussion, it's supposed to be fun, it's supposed to be entertaining, exciting, but it's also real. And that's what makes this stuff so fascinating especially when you can begin having your own experiences, getting involved and learning about making contact with higher civilizations and all of that really, really interesting stuff. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and roll that intro and we'll get uh, onward with today's discussion. All right, everybody, I am back. Now, uh, isn't it great having a little studio uh, in your bedroom? Because uh, you know, I always wonder, like, will that media arts degree ever pay off? Well, it does pay off because I love media, I love editing. I'm, I also do travel logs and travel videos on another account someplace, Cyrus the Explorer. Well, um, I've always had a fascination with exploring things that are out of the ordinary, that are unknown. And so this led me to becoming a, what we would call a paranormal researcher, but really, Throughout my life, I wanted to uncover mysteries that were causing grief in people, mysteries that caused so much sadness and issues on our planet. And I always had a feeling that there were some clandestine groups involved that were purposefully holding humanity back. I always had a feeling that this wasn't something that was not intentional, that there was a machine in place in society that keeps the system rigged, that keeps us held back, that keeps us from understanding higher realities because so many of us have experiences journeying into places. Sometimes we call that astral projection, for example. Now I began becoming, I guess you could call it prolific astral projectioner, projection um, specialist. Uh, I would say about the last 15 years, but I always knew that there was even more to that than met the eye because if you are familiar with my other channel, I spent many years trying to pick apart those experiences and existing literature on the internet. You have the Monroe Institute, you have Tom Campbell, you have a lot of different sources of information, but there was always something that didn't quite resonate with me it's because I always knew I was having experiences on what we could call literal, physical other realities because there was a dichotomy of what we would call the astral spectrum, which is the thought-driven spirit world, which I would say is uh, there's a variant of this in every culture on Earth that understands that there is a thought-driven, non-physical reality that is accessible. And there is, in addition to that, um, what I call higher realities, which are physical realities, and yet they are hybrid realities, places that are fantastic, and amazing by every means possible compared to our lives on this earth. And so those hybrid realities, as I began to call them, um, began to comprise the, the bulk of many of my experiences that I chronicled in books like Understanding Life After Death. And so I went on with a career in publishing involving those books, but I didn't have all the pieces put together, right? Now, a member of my community, I don't know if you're still out there someplace, um, was it Michelle, Melissa? You sent me a pair of copper dowsing rods and saying, hey, this is a way to begin activating certain parts of your brain to begin uh, communications on a different level, all right? So I began playing around with those copper dowsing rods in May 2021. 
And the first thing I noticed, and I wish I had a pair with me right now. I don't have, I don't have my, my, I, I gave them, I gave them away, but I wish I could really like use these and show you how they have uh, almost exact precise accuracy. So I can just hold them up like this and move it this way, move it that way and use yes, no basic queries. And so uh, I began communicating with somebody in May, 2021, because I'd hold the copper dowsing rods out and I'd say, you know, it's my name Cyrus, this is yes, this is no, and it would have 100% accuracy. So of course I had a very skeptical, rigid roommate who doesn't buy into any of this. That was a complete nightmare living with this guy, by the way. But nonetheless, I've escaped from that situation. So he's like, Cyrus, I see you playing around with those copper dowsing rods. First of all, it's not healthy to get involved in that kind of stuff. And number two, it's just your subconscious mind causing your hands to, to twitch, that's it. Of course, that attitude, in my opinion, is part of that machine in place in society that I spoke of before, which is keeping everybody held back. It's that same machine, that same system that um, makes it socially, culturally, uh, I would say socially, culturally, and economically acceptable to denigrate these subjects. Because, I mean, do you want to be seen as a crazy person? Or do you want to make money? Do you want to succeed in life? And so you join the system, you join the mainstream, and as soon as something happens that's paranormal, people are trained and programmed predictively to push it down, to attack it, insult it, and attack the people doing it. And so this is why you know it's important to be careful who you're living with and what kind of um, living social situations you find yourself involved in. I see this happening again and again and again out there. Okay, so so the point is is that I began. Uh, using these rods now in private because I just I'm like I it can't be my subconscious mind causing my hand to twitch because I'm I'm trying out every scientific variable I can like I'm I'm stabilizing my hand I'm holding my hand like this uh, to um, try to make sure that it's not moving in some subconscious way and I'm still finding 100% accuracy okay so this actually evolves into having clear audience experiences because what happens is I find that when I'm in when I'm talking to my communicator who later identifies herself by spelling her name out as Alarina that she um, basically I can I can tell what she's going to tell me through spelling it out on an alphabet using copper rods before she finishes so I'll ask Lorena how are you doing today and then she will respond the letter E and then I will immediately know that she's saying excellent. So what this does is it's like it was priming my mind, my brain, to begin having clear audience experiences. So the more I was using these rods every day, the more I find out that Lorna, and I actually have a, I have a photo of her, I think I'll post it in an upcoming video, which, which was uh, manifested to me uh, three nights ago, that she died in 1909 in Turkey. And she died as a young girl who was, I um, believe she was about nine years old, right? So that makes Lauren there today uh, to, uh, 122 years old. Okay, so Lorna, uh, I came to find, died, was taken by her ancestors and her loved ones, dying of a childhood cancer, very, very sad, in the Ottoman Empire, and taken into a higher reality that we call higher density worlds, right? So... Um, these higher density worlds are accessible and they represent what I would later learn about 25 to 30 percent of us when we die on this planet are what happens is that we are tethered by what's called the silver cord and this is an energy system in our bodies that we can use that to place ourselves in these other worlds sometimes while we sleep but to transfer into them permanently what happens is that our soul is taken basically and wrapped in this what we would call a divine holy magical energy we're going to go back into the subject of angels and divine beings so this holy energy that's within the people of earth specifically is kind of wrapped around our what we would call the astral body the there's a kind of copy of us that exists within the magical reality spirit reality spectrum and then you can simply use that and have yourself placed into one of these higher realities and it can be a simple matter of you 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 you, you die you find yourself leaving your body and you can be taken by your ancestors or your spirit team which can include um different major predominant neighboring civilizations this includes the arcturians the lyrans for example 
taken out and then placed into let's say the in her case what they call technically the sixth density now actually she arrived to the fifth density and was with her grandparents and then she was later taken up into the sixth density earth which is where I was communicating to her from. It's like where I was getting this information. Now later on, um, this information, I started to unfortunately cause some static in communities because I was sharing this with a lot of people who could relate to it very well, but it was also going against certain religious and uh, preconceived ideas about where we go to when we die and what the process is. So I didn't realize I was stepping on a lot of people's little you know delicate flowers that they've planted all in their gardens of their minds and they don't want anyone interrupting their set of reality-based views about how it all operates but then they're not people are not interested always in hearing what kind of communications these are and what they're trying to tell us because i found out that this world that lorna was in could be considered paradise or heaven by i would say any standard of our existence everything is beautiful and luminous and literally if you were to go to that world and it would you know and you were taken back this would be what we would call a near-death experience because it is a luminous holy magical reality but it's also a, a physical reality in the sense that you're not there just creating all of it with your mind these are spirit astral reality experiences where existence is like this playground it's extremely important for people to understand that distinction that you go into these other realities and it represents the higher cosmos the higher universe basically and that higher universe is a physical reality still but it's a hybrid it's like how we like to call it those of us who do this research it has been spoken of i would say in many civilizations higher earths uh, the Indian civilizations talk about as Vedic civilizations, Mandarin civilizations. Uh, actually, um, I found out through a lot of well, a couple of girlfriends of mine in Southeast Asia, Indonesian civilizations, they talk about these same concepts. These are higher versions of our Earth, a higher frequency. And uh, they are amazing, amazing places that are full of people from our ancient history and people are young and beautiful but it's also a place where it's like you might need to hire a car mechanic because it's not a place where our minds just create everything it's part of the physical system which is part of the spirit reality so we're all in the spirit reality right now but what's happening is there are gradients of of what we call corporeal essence or physicality and solidarity and we can move in within that spectrum it doesn't have to be an ideological battle because there's all these different types of realities we go into. What I would later find is that the New Age movement, complete with all of its what we would call false light teachings, have this, uh, they're kind of hell-bent on saying no reality is this way, it's not that way. There's no such thing as this type of earth, there's no such thing as um, a place that has uh, that is corporeal, we all move into a summer land. There's no, there's no such thing as nighttime. It looks like an English pastoral field, and everybody's walking around wearing their Victorian clothing, just like they say in spiritualism. And so I just couldn't believe the amount of closed-mindedness that I was dealing with when I was first like discovering this and posting my experiences, only to find myself repeatedly getting like I would say attempts to humiliate me, or say that these experiences. My favorite one is it's evil spirits tricking me. Well, I, I would deal with that, I would say, all the way until the present day. But nevertheless, I was also meeting many people, having experiences with the same group, talking to the same people I was talking to, and having manifestation experiences up into those realities. Okay, so all of this was now being confirmed to me through mental syncing, as you can see on the slide to your right, which is an advanced form of telepathy. It's... Um, basically communications reserved for inside players and it's easily accessible what's funny is i think on the screen it's over here but if you see my eyes going this way it's because it doesn't actually correspond so i'm sorry if that's jarring to you but the point is is i came to find that there was a whole secret world of people using telepathy and mental thinking all over the planet but you see these people who people who do this type of thing they do not have, and I'm going to see if my microphone is going to, the best place I came to find to put my microphone is actually in my hair, because anywhere, if I put my microphone too far down on my shirt, it all sounds muffled. 
See, don't you love audio? I actually used to be a wedding videographer and I stopped being a wedding videographer because all it takes is to screw up the audio and you have a very, very unhappy client because you just ruined their wedding. <laughs> and I'm not saying this happened, but it almost happened. And I dropped that job fast because if you're doing audio and you're a videographer, you need multiple lavalier microphones. You need somebody with a boomstick. You need somebody. You need somebody with one of those, like, um, with you know, those little portable road mics. Like, you need all of it. And in one wedding I did, I actually had of my three different backup audios, two of them failed, and I had to rely on just one microphone. And I had to spend about I don't know, 50, 60 hours straight tinkering that audio so it's acceptable to them, and even actually having to dub certain things in. This is why I stopped doing wed wedding videos. Okay, where were we? Okay, um, soul group discoveries, connections to higher densities. Okay, um, so I began to discover how so much of this is uh, inside baseball. Other people have the skill, but what stops people from openly sharing it? The answer is number one, people integrate into telepathic clairaudient experiences and they believe it's part of their own minds and they do not relate or connect it to the world around them. Number two is the collective consciousness actually um, can block you. And this can literally mean being hit by feelings of fear, anxiety, or even sickness because the collective consciousness, which is inhabited by so many, I would say, closed-minded and even, I hate to say it, wicked people, that what's happening is, uh, um, let's just say the collective consciousness will come around and notice something that's happening that's so supernatural and so out of the ordinary that we'll see a situation where the whole collective consciousness will focus on that one person and attack them, make them sick. So that's an issue. And um, well, it's strange talking about this because I've experienced this, right? So if you were to mentally sync with someone who's living, who lives in Japan, because I know somebody who lives in Japan who I can mentally sync to, and she, you know, we can we can have communications. If we were on the phone, we could confirm it. I could say, were we talking? Were we speaking telepathically? She'd be like, yeah, we were talking about this, this, this. But if I were to sync my thoughts to her and say, hey, Naomi, can you send me an email? And if she were to send me an email, the collective consciousness would freak out because this is something paranormal. And we both we both get blasted by negative energy. We get blasted by manifestations of collective power and hostility against us. And it can even be fatal. So as a result of that, it becomes this inside thing that people do, but people keep it a secret. But not anymore because we're bringing it out into the open. So I discovered that people have um, soul groups all over the place that belong to all kinds of exotic civilizations and extraterrestrial races. That so many different groups, I'll talk about this later, are hiding out in plain daylight. That these are connections to higher densities, other higher universes, which are indeed places that we can go to when we die, like happened to Lorna. This is not the astral plane. The astral plane is the great mental spectrum, but the astral plane weaves in and out of the higher densities. These are like magical realities where things can happen that we cannot experience here. So it really is a great adventure. Our universe is a low density universe. A low density universe, what that means is that we are on the physicality spectrum. We're over here, we're as far into the physical spectrum as imaginable. So we don't get to see people manifesting and demanifesting and people flying and people experiencing magical power and people you know be, being part of an energy system where we experience and feel life on a huge level instead this is a contrast experience so people are born on this planet and we have a really difficult time kind of experiencing i would say the joys of what other people experience you see um so but let me just catch my thoughts there for a second so so you see um, it's really difficult and uh, being born here is something like many star seeds talk about it is not easy of course we have unimaginable wisdom because we get to be put into a system like this that we can get out of and then we can look back and we can understand and appreciate the way reality operates on the fifth density 
When we talk about the shift, we're talking about the planet actually moving into what is called the fifth density. Now, this is not the fifth dimension, it's the fifth density. These are, those are like mathematical, uh, spatial astrophysics concepts. No, the fifth density or 5D means our molecular density structure is changing. And that's a big deal. Okay, um, so major mysteries started to unlock for me and other researchers as we began exploring mental telepathy. Now, I feel like this is actually my team speaking through me that I need to let audiences have a moment to catch their thoughts because I know this is a rapid like download of information for people to catch on to understand. So let's take a moment and I'm just gonna do a quick intermission here before we jump back into it because I'm not actually cutting these videos or editing them because that would um, make the production of these videos slow down substantially and I'm kind of working many angles here. Okay, so let's give it a second. Take a minute, breathe in. Okay, good. Because I also had a chance to communicate to my team for a second using some of these protocols and I was able to get some quick information about some of the, you know, if, if I'm doing this video well or if I'm, you know, losing, <laughs> people are kind of losing track if it's too complicated. And I'm being told it is a little bit complicated so I need to like, you know, be mindful how I'm explaining all this because you might have to like go back and watch it again and again. Because I know it's like a big, it's a big download of information, stuff I want to get out there. Especially this slide over here. Major mysteries unlock the afterlife, UFOs, magic realities, secret space programs. Obviously, and there's this, these are not listed in order of importance, but for me, the afterlife is number one. I want to know our cosmic destiny, that this meat suit is not our only existence. UFOs are important to me, but I was never big into the UFO field. Now I guess I am because I have direct communications to understand those civilizations. Magical realities are experiences in realities that are beyond our imagination. I, I you can think almost of things in mainstream culture. How about like um, the Wizard of Oz? I mean, like places that you can tell are magical. Magic is a very real thing and that these are worlds that are sacred realities that are again these this isn't just the astral plane where we're just creating everything as we go along with our minds which is pretty much the domain of the monroe institute and these groups that work specifically in the spirit reality this is other planets and other universes that are high density universes hybrid spirit and physical realities that are beyond imagination and finally, the secret space programs. And I am talking about, well, I first got into this with Wilcock and Corey Good back in the Gaia show, Cosmic Disclosure. And I found that, well, this is amazing information, but I knew that there was some misinformation and some things that didn't feel right about it. As well as a lot of amazing insiders like Tony Rodriguez, for example, is one of them. Excuse me, my mouth is, my mouth is getting dry. So mm. that's the thing about talking on and on. I'm not editing these videos. I should have had a little cup of water here, but I'll do it better next time. Tony, oh, oh Daryl James is one. Daryl James recalls basically his life among the Tigetans, which is a civilization out there, um, a, a neighboring star. And so many fascinating people coming out of the secret space program area. And I wanted information about what, what that really was all about too. So I began sinking my thoughts telepathically to those civilizations and those people and kind of learning about how it all fits, learning about the concept of, of, of the higher densities, learning about other universes and how there's a universe, like multiverse universe cluster around us that all these different civilizations kind of weave in and out of. And so we'll talk about that in the future, uh, future videos, probably my next video. So this whole thing became a journalistic fact-finding mission with, I would say, you know, hundreds of thousands of words of notes on my computer. Eventually, I lost my computer. I've been under a kind of attack, let's say, where one weird thing after another weird thing has happened to me. 
to stop some of this information from getting out. And this does involve the group that some of those SSP insiders may talk about called the Cabal. And the Cabal is, or had been, I would say a predominant force of evil on the world. And so much of the cosmic shift involves actually getting those evil factions out of the world. And when you, be, when you end up on their radar, and you can ask, I mean, you can look up people like Emory Smith about things that they've been through. What I've been through is just uh, minuscule compared to what some of these insiders have been through. Just through me um, showing people the realities about like mental sinking and telepathy, how I became stalked and had all kinds of very weird things happen to me, which required me using all my senses and all my intuition, all my instincts and all my abilities to, to counter. And again, we're in an area where the average normie will hear this, like Cyrus is a conspiracy theorist. None of this is real. Um, supernatural things are not real. Physicalism is my religion. Physicalism is my God. Money is my God. And I would say this is about half the population, right? Half the population, they don't want to hear any of this. They want to bury it, and they, they refuse to believe that they're evil occult societies, but there are, and it gets very, very intense. But we're not talking about the cabal just yet, and there's a lot of information. I actually recommend, so there's some channels out there that talk about this. Uh, there's a very interesting one called Super Soldier Talk, which sounds, it seems kind of hokey. But if you delve into that, you'll find that there's actually real stuff, real experiences people are having. And there's some bad, bad stuff out there, people. But all of that is being taken care of, and this is part of the shift. Okay, so I found out the secret world of telepathic thinking. The information I received is that when we begin practicing telepathy, you'll find yourself entering into a community where about... 10% of the world is secretly engaged in telepathic thinking or have ET origins. What that means is that almost 10% of the entire planet Earth are not the people that you think they are. That these are actually people, I keep feeling like my microphone is about to like drop, no. That these are actually people who are ETs. They may come from the Aldebaran civilizations, the Ashtari civilizations, or even the Arcturans who can replicate, clone a human body out. These are all higher density uh, civilizations that are not from our universe. Our universe is very desolate because it's a low density universe. It's, there's colonies and civilizations here and there, but nothing like the higher densities. The higher densities, they have power, full power over space. They can manifest their ships anywhere they want. They can flick a switch and their ship can go from here, here, here. They can, come, they, they can go from this, a star like uh, Arcturus to our sun, Sol, in uh, half an hour. And I'm told space travel is unbelievably easy. You jump in a spaceship and you just press a couple buttons and you just hang, you just hang out. And you get delivered you know, to a different star system in half an hour, an hour. You can get to a di uh, different galaxy in a couple of months. And so that's actually what uh, space travel is like, using the powers of manifestation, allowing a ship to actually teleport, blah, blah, blah. just having a, a level of control over physical reality, which is possible up in the higher densities. So these higher density civilizations have seeded themselves into our world so much that it's guaranteed that you know people. I know you're always wondering about that one weird girl in high school who talked to herself a lot and seemed to be antisocial, but surprisingly very social when you got to know her. Maybe, um, maybe she wore a lot of the, you know, I don't know, maybe she kind of dressed differently, kind of funny, seemed to be in her own head a lot, had a lot of weird, funny cosmic ideas. Anyway, she was an alien. And a big surprise that Deborah was an alien this whole entire time, but she probably was. Oftentimes, these groups are all the barons. All the barons are a human colony. Like our world was populated by many all the barons. They are, in a sense, the origin. They are the ancient alien race that basically they colonize worlds like this one. And they are humans, and they are very interesting, funny people who have uh, captivated our imaginations in the media. So I'll talk more about them later on. And this is also verifiable because I've had people within that 10% spectrum, they're very scared of the collective consciousness finding them out and going after them. 
because they're aliens, they're supernatural, because because society has been, has been brainwashed to keep these people from being able to reveal who they are. But I've had experiences meeting these people and getting direct, shall we say, knowledge that they are who they are. Like I, I've had literally like a waitress once do a double smile and a wink at me after she was communicating to me telepathically to let me know that she was actually, well, not she was a Ray Darren and not an Alder Baron, but but it's like I, I've been able to investigate this on the ground, boots on the ground as a researcher and verify that the people that I'm telepathically syncing my thoughts to are really who they are. And they all communicate telepathically in secret because if they break that secret, the collective consciousness fries them. So as I said in this slide, we were slaves to the collective consciousness. And this is the primary issue with the shift. But we must keep in mind, uh, small numbers can change everything. So one of the reasons I'm doing this work is I know I don't have a gazillion people on this uh, platform, but I don't need to. I'm told that if you had some big named dude out there, like let's say David Wilcock, who has a massive audience of millions of people in the awakening community, and some of his information is accurate and some of it is not accurate. But if Wilcock were to come on you know, his video and talk about what I'm talking about, it would actually be too much for the world to handle. It would cause a collective consciousness instability issue, which could cause so much of civilization to fall apart. And so it's very, very precarious sometimes with this. And But if you have a smaller channel, a smaller group of people who are, who are creating ripple effects, that can be enough to integrate the collective consciousness so that 10% of the world that are really not who we think they are. Often they're infiltrating corrupt businesses, corrupt corporations, and corrupt governments. They can begin to manifest as exactly who they really are. And that, in essence, is the shift. Because when that begins happening, we are only months away from ships landing and civilization as we know it changing. Okay. Um, as was in the book, The Convoluted Universe, we can see that the shift is more outstanding than anyone can possibly imagine. Because these ET civilizations, including the human ones, are more outstanding than anything anyone can imagine. Take, take the craziest science fiction, multiply it, magnify it. These are civilizations in space, in, in higher universes that we cannot see, but they're up there. And these civilizations, I've seen them, I've been taken to some of these places, and it is more incredible than anyone can imagine. Um, the Angelic Order, their ships look like giant flying cathedrals. I mean, we're looking at stuff that is so outstanding. I think the average person on Earth might not even be able to handle it. Like, we'd have to slowly integrate into these realities before we can just dive into it. Okay. Real quick, if, you, if you're still watching this, um, let's just say the most important thing that you can do, besides buying me a, a comb for my beard, I think I'm going to shave this in a few days, is to please subscribe to the channel because this is a new channel. Um, my old channel, again, as, as with everything else I went through last year, my channel was hacked and my Gmails were hacked, my Gmail accounts were hacked. So I cannot access Afterlife Topics of Metaphysics. So it's all going to be about this channel. So the way to push back and fight against this is to subscribe. And if you want to support the work I do, call, uh, Cosmic Shift Awakening at gmail.com is my email. I do one-on-one -on -one sessions to help train people in telepathy, clear audience, remote viewing. I can also do what we would call readings because they are, because I'm also a medium. And I can use these powers to locate and talk about people's past lives, their deceased loved ones, all of that. And I do it for donations. So you're not going to see some weirdo $2,000 bill with me like we see with um, some of these, you know, some of the, uh, let's say, world-class mediums. No, 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 no. I just, I want to help out those so donations. If you're like, nah, I don't, you know, I didn't get what I want. Okay, you don't, there's no, you know, there's no obligation, but it does depend on my schedule, my ability to book people. Because if I'm kind of, if my schedule is filled up, then I won't be able to take anyone. But one-on-one -on -one discussions like this. You see, it helps integrate the collective consciousness, especially when I get people telepathically syncing and we're having like nonverbal communications. That's integrating the planet more and more. That's not supernatural. That's not paranormal. You can have these experiences. It's completely safe. I hope I didn't just burp. If you did hear, if you did hear a belch, just 
just delete it out of your mind. You know, that didn't happen. Anyway, so that's um, a very, very useful thing. Okay, so the major enemies, as I spoke about, is the secret societies that they, they don't want this information out there. They want to covet it, hoard the information, and use it for power. It is the cabal, and we'll talk about who they are in future videos, including photographic proof I have of when they were hanging around Tucson, Arizona, not that long ago. I am safe now, but it's it's been a long process to get to that point, and I would say I'm completely safe. There's collective ignorance. I'll also add to that list new societies, institutes and groups that collectivize and are consciously or subconsciously attacking people because they want to gain control of this narrative because they are in it to win it. It's pathological careerism, pathological professionalism, where they, all they care about is getting ahead of everybody else. It's like the corporate attitude of, of, of Earth, of Gaia, is so horrible. Our ET friends or all the Baron friends call it just a pathological psychopathy. That, it's, it's that the way our planet acts and treats each other is completely insane. Um, it, there's absolutely no reason in life to see existence as this dog-eat-dog -dog world where you have to backstab your coworker and get ahead. You combine that with this knowledge and you get some really bad stuff and also collective ignorance. That's the end of this presentation. Wow. So anyway, so thank you for watching The Great Cosmic Shift with Cyrus. Again, hitting subscribe really helps. Leave a comment with any questions. I'll do my best to get back to you. And um, I suppose that's it. So upcoming videos will be channeling sessions where I will speak as different groups from up there and to begin really elaborating on what's going on in the world and so many more things. You'll notice when I'm in trance, with, I'm in semi-trance when I'm mentally sinking is that my demeanor will change, all of that, because I'm on autopilot while somebody else speaks through me. I'm looking forward to this because it's going to be great. And also, I have a new book I am working on. In addition to be up Understanding Life After Death, we have The Afterlife and Beyond, which you can find on Amazon. New book is going to be called Understanding Extraterrestrials. And finally, I do have a Patreon somewhere. Go on my other channel. You might be able to find the link. I, I, I don't have access to my Patreon anymore either because of the hack. But I will eventually gain access to that, to that Patreon again. And, and if you want to support me that way, you can. If you are a supporter from the other channel and you're hoping for like, you know, um, to be able to get in touch with me as a patron for one-on-one -on -one time, please email me at cosmicshiftawakening at gmail.com because I have no way to find you. I have no way to reach you. I have no way to go on my Patreon page and be able to talk to you. So because that's completely, you know, erased, I have to um, rely on anyone from this channel who can track me down. And as for monthly or, or as I say weekly meetings, um, I'm going to have those fired up again soon for patron supporters. Okay.